each of you said a little bit about, about this, but what do you like best about your job? And uh, the two things I'm interested in, what do, you, what do you like best about your job and your relationship, do you have a supervisor? So those two questions, do you have a supervisor and what's your relationship like with your supervisor? I like my job because I like to bring the art to life. And seeing as I grew up with cartoons, I began to grow attached to them, which is why I was trying to make some of my own. John Clark, my supervisor, we actually shared a lot of perspectives for the cartoons. And he showed, even when I'm not in school anymore, I'm still learning from him. design the backgrounds, characters, any props, because I just have to work hard to push the animation to creativity. So my supervisor is um, uh, Todd Dornfield, that he teach me some animation techniques and to do some creativity things that what I have to create to look forward for. First, my supervisor is Molly, and she helps me out with any you know, concerns or questions. She'll let me know, um, or if I need to do something, she'll let me know what what my objectives will be for that day or week. So you know, it's just been pretty good. No. I had other jobs in past before uh, Target because I used to work at uh, Soup Plantation, Cook Roos, uh, Danny's, uh, passing uh, 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 PCC, um, working in the cafeteria, um, and then also uh, Market, like Farm Fresh, Fresh Market, when they were still around. <laughs> um, and then and now Target. So, um, <coughs> well, I just been there for this studio, like in a, like I've been for like three years. Um, so, my mother paid to go to school for her summer's workshop and I try to work hard and I try to know for the, to do the principles of animation that I will have to to emphasize of these animation of workshop earlier. Then I try to to do as I will try to exaggerate for any kinds of animation fields and that will make their quality more better. Thank you very much. Before you started to do animation, did you do have you done any other kinds of work, whether it was a volunteer or 
before you got into doing the animation? Well, it's hard to know is um, uh, the, what I just did for the, any kinds of volunteers, what to, what I need to talk about is where I need to go to school or how to, how to get a job and I, I try to, to recognize any kinds of, of, any kinds of routines one, about this, this responsibilities and I will try to moving on to to do my lesson about that. Thank you very much.
it up. The parents are here. Their support system is here because it, it really takes a team. This is not easy to happen. It's not overnight. I do want to say, from where I've been around for 20 some years, I work for the regional center. You know, and what I want to say to kind of go to the next section is that it's it's a transition. Things change, but they don't change that fast. You know, so don't be disappointed. Yes, the advocacy, you need to know these things because you may go tomorrow to, you know, the different organizations and they're like, what are you talking about? Because the system moves slow. But it doesn't mean they don't have the heart to do it and they don't want to do it. And people are transitioning right now. Everybody's transitioning. It's like moving this huge, you know, 18-wheeler, you know, and, and suddenly you have to move it really fast. It doesn't move fast. And so I'm not saying don't let your dreams go, don't let be disappointed when you go and talk to organizations and these things are not quite happening, but today you got the information and today you know. And the best way to make things happen, like the Lanterman app happen, is parent professional partnerships. It really is all about those partners and it's the parents that push us faster. You know, the system moves so slow, but you guys make us rush. And so you have to push, you have to talk about these things. I know these things, but how can, not angry, you're not doing this, blah, blah, blah. there's a time for that too. I, I know that part too. But it's like, how can we make this happen? We know these regulations, we know these things, we know you're moving, but how can we work together the next day to make this happen? That's the best way to do it. You've got all the systems lined up. you got education, you got regional center, you got the Department of Rehab, they all have this, but imagine all the people they have to talk to and educate to move it in the right direction. But it's going there, it's there. So I'm gonna be quiet now. We have lots of great, we have lots of great, I, I gave a lot of time, what time is it? Nine. Nine. Nine, we're right on time. I gave you all a half hour to, for discussion and all the questions you wanna ask now and Anything you want to take back? Yes. So I'm going to let go of this mic, and we're just going to go with questions. I'll let uh, Dr. Rayner take this over. Okay. Go. Do you want to try that? I'm in the front, so it's yeah. easy for me on the front. Um, I have a daughter who is uh, 20 years old uh, with autism, ADHD, and learning disability. So. Uh, one of the things, I appreciate you're telling us about all the policies and everything that's going on, but the reality for, uh, I think all of us, and you all have experienced it, is it's, it's murder to navigate through the bureaucratic jungle out yeah. there yeah. and to educate ourselves. And I'm always thinking about, I mean, I'm college educated, but I always think about the people who are poor, mm -hmm. right, who, who don't know how to research the material, and, and I'm thinking there are an awful lot of people out there who need this help. I don't know what to do about it. But anyway, to get to my question, it was very difficult for us to, um, well, get through everything. We've done the whole road ever since she was three years old. And um, finally we're at a point here where she's sitting around on her machine, on her you know, phone constantly because she doesn't have a direction now after high school. She, she did well in getting to school and doing the job, but she couldn't get through college, she only did one semester, she needs a job. So we have been working hard through all of these agencies to find her. Currently, uh, she's registered or, or going to start as soon as the Department of Rehabilitation gets moving on this. She's going to start at FBO. She's spoken with someone there. She has this counselor. But what I'm curious about is how do we find agencies like this? We found this agency, but I don't know how many there are in Pasadena, Glendale, Eagle Rock area. Uh, I had heard about Exceptional Minds. So for the two of you, who, who are the four of you, I guess, who are representing these two agencies, I'm curious to know the difference between what FBO does and what Exceptional Minds does. Because I never really considered Exceptional Minds for my daughter, though she is very creative. And I'm wondering about that. What is the, so what is the difference? FBO is one, well you guys can tell about it. So I'm curious about the difference. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I'll, I'll speak about FBO. So I'm the Chief Executive Officer. We're at Long Fair Oaks in Pasadena. We're about three, or three minutes away from here. Um, what we do is we provide all of the different types of vocational services you've heard tonight. Historically, we've provided all of those programs in the past. And 
we've been there since 1965, so we've, we've definitely been doing this for a long time. We've got a very dedicated team. One of the main programs that we're doing now is um, support employment program, internship programs, customized employment, all of the forward facing programs. Uh, we all, we have a sort of, we've done the social workshop model and we're in the process of transitioning out of it. As you've all mentioned, it's a slow process, but we're making a lot of progress. Um, we've moved three clients from our workshop into the community in the last three months. We've made 10 placements in the community since uh, July, so we're making a lot of progress right now. And things are going very well. What we do, in, and to answer your question, is those that are employed on the outside, we provide uh, job coaching. So we go out there with them and we get them prepared for the job before they get there. We also provide employment training, employer training. So we get together their immediate supervisors and we train them not just about autism, but about the particular employee that they're going to be working with. And then we follow up on a regular basis. The artist has to send us emails and then we, we scale back. That's the other thing that we really try and do is we don't want to be a support for life there. We want to make sure that, that we scale back so that they're more and more independent each time. And after a couple of months, we back off all together, and unless they need us, we let them go. In every conversation, you're like, oh my god, I know a guy with autism that, that actually he does music, you know, and so try, try to make that, uh, try to normalize that in, 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 in a sense. So that's our goal. And we try to that. Yes, there were questions here that I need to take beforehand. Yes. Yes. Oh, it is long. Hi, uh, my name is Jonathan Cannons. This is my son, Justin. Yes. Who's 30 years old. And I think the, I, I really, it's great to hear about some of these programs. But the, the problem that we, we face is that the, most of the employers out there are not aware that the, that the autistic individuals are so mm -hmm. capable. Mm -hmm. In other words, that much more than their neuro neurotypical appears, they actually can focus. They don't have absenteeism. That a lot of, that a lot of employers face with a lot of millennials these days. And it's uh, so it's, it's, it's a real, it's an incredible wealth. But the problem is, is that employers are, are frightened of these kids because of the social problems. And with Justin, he, he attended a class in West Valley College for coding, and if he had, we probably had 30 interviews, so he couldn't get past the phone call. And so it, what I think is very important for these kids, when they get to a certain stage, is to get that, go get over that initial hump of really educating the potential employers, helping them with the interview skills, and helping them with the first few months, to give the employers the confidence that these kids can really do the job. Because once they see how these kids perform, yes. then I think that they can take it from there. And I see that for both of these organizations, it looks like they, they really understood this and have gotten over it. Unfortunately, most of the places that we work with have not. That's a good I think that there needs to be some more formal mechanisms that are developed um, at the local level, and I think that we should be looking towards uh, the one stops, the American Job Centers, to help with this, of forming uh, employer groups. And I think that what you're talking about is important, and maybe it's a, a matter of honoring those employers who are leading the charge and having them speak to other employers. They really, my experience from these community conversations with the employers want to hear from other employers. Doesn't mean that they're not interested in the provider, but they, what they really want to understand is how does this work within your business, and they need to be able to see in their mind's eye that kind of thing. Okay. So we okay. need to find our champions, okay. Okay. you know, um, whether coding people understand animation people, I don't know, but we need to find the sort of okay. that works. These work programs are, you know, just an hour or two a day until they find a job. And so are we looking like in a year of just sitting on your couch and watching TV? Or can you have two services? Okay. Okay. I don't know if that's something that okay. It may depend on, I mean, I think there's some regions okay. where people may want to speak to okay. this. But um, okay. one of the, the best practices that we identified was an organization in uh, the San Francisco okay. area called WorkLink, and they were able to negotiate as a program to do both. 
So and the program itself was supporting people as they went for employment. And then other parts of the day, they were doing other career job preparatory activities or other activities. Um, and um, they were able to work out a, a funding model that allowed them not to blend dollars, because that's what you're not allowed to do, combine dollars, but to sequence the dollars so that a person can get X number of hours of work and X okay. number of hours. Whether that's typical here, I really don't have any answer. But the other part is, as we move as a system to true person-centered planning, there's probably going to need to be a little bit of down the pipe. It's not an instant answer for you. Other kinds of funding models. And one of the things that's coming up pretty soon is self-determination, which really will allow people to decide for themselves a booming industry is going to be one of the number one, it is, one of the number one employers for the next decade. So if you have a first adult or a young person who's interested in anything related to the healthcare industry, there's, there's some exciting things happening. So what about that mystery? Are you saying Google vocational training in your area? Is that basically... Well, you should be able you should be able to get some guidance from those that who are, but in the absence of that guidance, yes. I also wouldn't ignore your community colleges and other options for post secondary education, other vocational programs. Yeah. Uh, just we have a car that's blocking somebody. A Hyundai uh, Tucson. Okay. Okay. I, I, I want to, I work close for the regional center, so I, I do want to give a piece of advice right away. Call your service coordinator, have a person-centered planning meeting, be very clear on what you want for your son or daughter. They do have a resource directory. I was the director of the Family Resource Center for many years, and if you go into the resource center website, I mean the Lanterman website, you'll find a resource directory. So start looking for those employment agencies. They should have them on that resource directory. I found, I found it. You I did. found two. Oh no, they should have more. And there's a wide variety of things that are also developed. Jack Man for Autism is relatively new. Exceptional Minds, how many years? Seven, seven years, but it's taking you know a while to get it off. So things are moving. Are the, moving. The other thing is that there's another service option which is called Tailored Day Services, which we literally can. can individualize what it is that she, the supports you want. It could be yes. supports to go to college, it could be supports to go volunteer, it could be supports on a job. So there's burgeoning flexibility within the system to support it. Does it you tailored day? Tailored day. Tailored. Like, they get this through their person center plan. Yes. So everything starts, at, at you, nothing's going to move until you have that meeting with your service coordinator. And if it's not a very good meeting, you don't have to work with that service coordinator either. So they have to sit with you and you have to say, let's sit down, I learned a lot, you know, and I want to see things moving from my son to daughter. But that's your like agreement and contract with the regional center. Like anything you do, if you're going to build the house, do anything, you have a contract. That's your contract with the regional center. So that's where it all starts. And they're now, again, talking a different language. I see them getting tons of training on person-centered planning, on what Dr. Rayner talked today. They're getting training, too. They're all training at the same time that you're training today. It really is. They're not ahead of you, that, that ahead of you. They're not. Because these things happen at the federal level, then they come to the state level, and then they come to these big bureaucracies, and then it has to trickle down. But, but you can find each other in the middle somewhere. I have this information. Please help me. I know these things are happening, and they should be able to sit with you. I always encourage families to not take that person-centered planning for granted. And your wishes should be, and not only yours, your son or daughters should be heard loud and clear in that person-centered planning process. Yes, I know you've had your hand forever. Come on up here. Yes, come up here. I just wanted to, uh, well, first, I want to thank Patricia and the entire board of the Fifth Logical Alliance for shifting your focus. Yeah. And um, I'm a parent of 22 year olds. I've been involved with the Logical Alliance since she was way back when Bob and Judy were starting yeah. this whole thing. So good for you. And, yeah. <laughs> and that meant so much to me. And it me. That meant so much to me when Foot of Logs and Lions began and provided us with that connection, with that support, resources, information, all of that for those little kids as we were coming up. And I appreciate your reasoning for shifting that that's everywhere now. 
That information is out there. There's tons of people doing that. This is a cover. This is, we all have these most basic questions. And I'm so grateful to you guys for shifting your focus. Going to going forward address one of these critical needs of who is doing these programs. I was born and raised in Glendale. I I have never heard of SDF. I'm sorry. I have done extensive research for my daughter, looking for places since she was in elementary school. Never heard of SDF. You guys are interested in what you say. 1965. So there's a problem here. <laughs> I'm actively seeking and I can't find them. Why is that? You know, so hopefully we as an organization, all of us can help put together those resources and connect and find them and find each other. Somebody in my junior year in high school took me over to the US. It could have been UCLA. I'm not sure. Cindy, when uh, Sam came up to you, he didn't like what you were what you were doing because 
he told you something different. I love how you said, I didn't understand what you were asking for at first, but I do now. Let's work together to fix it. <laughs> so behavioral is super important in what we're doing. We're placing them in professional environments, but we try to help them figure out what they're doing. We're not magicians, we're coaches. We do work a lot on, 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 on conflict resolution, problem solving, self-advocacy. So if you have a question, I'm, I'm not going to want you to ask a question. I'm going to wait for you to ask a question. I'm going to, see you to, I'm going to ask you if you have a question instead of telling you what, what you're... I likely already know what, what, you, what you have an issue with, but I want them to ask the question so they, they, they can get into the habit of learning how to advocate for themselves. Um, also, uh, punctuality is, is very, very important, punctuality and attendance. And so we have, we have measures to always, to always uh, we have uh, evaluations to measure these. And also, we also have, um, we have a three-strike rule. And so, so there's warnings and then there's a strike. And so after you get the first strike, you don't really want to get two more strikes. Um, and so, and so that, 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 that's the way that we're implicitly um, helping them understand how what how it is outside, you know. So as as a musician, if you show if you show up to your job, if you show up to your gig and you're late, you don't you don't you don't get to play that day. And so built in is like if, if we if we if the start time is ten o'clock, you're arriving at nine thirty. And so we, we we build in punctuality to 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 the way that, that the program is run. So a lot of behaviors we uh, we we try to minimize by by our curriculum. Uh, so that that's actually built into the curriculum that we teach them. Um, okay. Thank you. This is how I wanted to close. Is the families uh, are here? I am the president of Modern Work, and I tell you, I'm so proud of you because 24 years ago, uh, this is not very popular, and we don't have many information in Spanish. It's more harder yes. to understand what it is. So he's done. He can talk, you know, because they say they they never talk. So when they, somebody told me that, I said, you don't have to see the autistic, you have to see the child. Because they give me a lot of excuse all the time because he's autistic, he don't learn. He's autistic, he don't cry. He's autistic, he don't talk, you know? And I said, I don't want to hear that anymore. Look into the person, look into my son, you know, as a human being. And one of the things I told my husband all the time, long time ago is, See, I look into the left, I'm happy because he's not very severe. See, I look into the right, I'm crying because he's not normal. So I don't look in anywhere. I look in him as a human being. And when, but like he said, he want to be animated. And I said, why not? He want to be whatever he want to do. And what we support him to do whatever he want to do. And this one is a dream for me. Because I said, I never thinking in the future he was, you know, in this panel. When I went to the conference long time ago, I saw a young man like this panel, and I think maybe one day he go, even though he don't talk very well or something. So, <laughs> so it's hard for him to express himself, you know, sometimes. But what can I tell you? I give you the chance, you know. Uh, Patricia invite us. And I asked him if he want to come, and he said yes. He said, okay, let's go do it. Whatever you want, that's it. Thank you.
hopefully we'll get a lot of the more non-traditional. Um, but it's just that the girls are not aware of all their traditional roles at, our, at Metro. Um, the Measure M has given us a lot of money. So let's are you getting it. Are you getting it? Can you to go after it? Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, this is, oh, Carmen, you want to say something? Carmen, come on. I want them to meet you. So, Carmen is the Langerman Regional Center Employment Specialist. I thought you were gone. I was just about to leave. Oh, okay. I just want you to meet her because um, we need to, come on, Carmen. <laughs> Yes, but no, you need to go see things. <laughs> Hi guys, so my name is Carmen Jimenez Wade, and I'm the employment specialist for Lunchman. And if you said a very nice thing earlier, and I was here in front of that, is that if we're coming into times of change, good change, and with that, it does start with the parents. Um, so there's 21 regional centers in California, and every single one has one of me. And we are the employment specialists. And we're serving as the liaisons for the three major partnerships, the Office of Education, GDS, and DOR. We're moving, but it does happen slowly. But it's happening. At Lanterman, um, FEO is one of our supporting employment providers. I just got this all of a sudden. Um, and then alone, there's a lot of changes happening with internships, getting clients employed. So it's happening, you guys. And I just, I'm kind of like the annoying cheerleader on all this, um, but but it's good still happening. We're going to start having trainings also for uh, with parents, explaining a little bit more about internships, um, trainings for supportive employment providers, and the incentives that they're also entitled to get when they help and get our clients' jobs. But not just any job. We're talking about competitive, competitively integrated jobs. Um, so if you guys have any questions, yes. What should be the liaison? Um, I'm thinking about, you know, my son in high school, uh -huh. and I know I'm in a community that hasn't even begun to be tapped for internships. I live in Burbank, okay? We have every major studio factory is there. Every major post-production facility is there. And who sh should be the liaison? Is it, is it regional center? Do they just walk you to a vendor? Because I've talked to vendors and they're like, well, we can help you work at a newspaper in Van Nuys, or we can, but you know, we're talking about self-determination, personal plan. Where, where does one go for that liaison? My son, I know if he calls, that's not really right. hard. And also if it's for incentive, like we'll pay for the employment, who does this? So basically, if your, your son or daughter is in, in high school, one of the, the major partners is school education. So there was money given for them to transi their transitional vocational programs to improve, meaning focusing on the person-centered planning. A lot of times the way it works for Latchman is our service providers who provide supportive employment, their job developers go out and meet. So if you do have, and sometimes we ask our parents, if you have connections out there, See, that's what they do. They bounce it back to me. Okay. Well, if you have the connections. Well, I don't. So, <laughs> well, yeah. I'm going to call Warner Brothers. By the way, I have attempted to contact somebody at Warner Brothers. Anybody, and I also have a, a daughter in her 20s who's gone on the whole job thing, neurotypical. You know, nowadays, you don't call anybody. Right. You have to yeah. wait for a job board. So, I feel like there's this big, like, there's a missing link here. <laughs> so what you do is you just get bounced. Uh, I mean, I'm saying because I am a client mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. regional center at the Langevin. Have you met with your service coordinator? And, then, and this is, the, I know I heard you earlier, I'm not sure. Yes, yeah, I said. Um, was meeting, having the ITP meeting. Now, be more specific on your child's interests. That's the first thing. Be more specific on your child's interests. Making sure that that's in my Because that is the contract. When that is, once that is done, the service provider makes a referral to a service, uh, uh, employment provider agency. And, and now, have connection. well, that's the thing. That's now we're switching it. into customized employment. Okay. Okay. It's no longer fitting them into, well, this is the list. It's changed. It's changed. As we speak. 
Yeah, literally as we're speaking, it's changing. So if you've gone this far and it hasn't worked, try it. Try it. Again. Yes. Because it is completely different. So it is time consuming, but it's different. It's more personalized. Yes, I'm going to have to wrap it up. Okay. Maybe you could talk to Carmen. What are we looking at? Yes. So she's wanting to stick around. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And remember, if you want to come outside, just yes. follow me. Yes. Because I'm also on the time constraint. <laughs> the people that can stay a little longer, they can. Um, I want to thank Dr. Olivia Rayner for. And our amazing panel.